Yeah. So welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's so good to be here, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. So we had a conversation <laughs> a couple, I think it was a couple of weeks ago now. Um, but I want to know like what is firing you up in this current moment right now? Right now? Oh gosh. Um, you know, I'm doing some really exciting things around um oh next week I'm going into a <clears throat> Facebook group, pardon me, <clears throat> Facebook group that I was invited into. I could work with a group of women to um, help them manage their stress and anxiety using EFT, emotional freedom technique. So I'm preparing for that. Um, oh, and just being here with you is just so exciting. I was just look, so looking forward to this all week. That's all I could think about was, okay, I just got to be ready for Jennifer's podcast. <laughs> So in that, in that group that you're going to, when you're going to be sharing with, for anxiety and all these things, is that like the thing that you love the most with like, you said EFT, maybe some of the audience doesn't know what that is. Like, how does that help support those, those feelings or anxiety or the different, I'm not sure I want to call it feelings, but those emotional mental states that we're in. Yeah. Well, so EFT or emotional freedom technique, or the other word is tapping. Uh, it's such a great tool because what it does is it's, an, it's a mind body energy tool that I use and a lot of people use to uh, just really calm our nervous system. And so, you know, whether I use it a lot in my practice with, <clears throat> with women around food um, and body issues, because, uh, you know, it's not about the food and we really need to get underneath what exactly it is that's going on and what's happening. Uh, whether it's, uh, you know, your, your, your beliefs are blocking you, whether you've got some trauma that's happened or something unconscious is going on. And so we want to get it underneath and that, and EFT is a great tool to be able to do that. So with this group, uh, the, the sort of the theme is stress and anxiety and gosh, who doesn't have stress and anxiety, particularly in the last year that we've, that we've had. But stress and anxiety is part of what happens when we are, uh, when we turn to food uh, with emotional eating, binge eating, um, overeating, any of those kinds of eating issues, disordered eating issues, which is really my sort of, uh, you know, area of expertise and, and focus. Um, and, uh, but I was delighted to go, to be able to go in and teach how to use EFT to calm the nervous system for whatever it is that's going on. And EFT is also great for things like, you know, calming your nervous system when you have an autoimmune condition, when you are, you've had trauma in your life, PTSD, it's used extensively with uh, traumatic, um, traumatic issues and PTSD, soldiers that have come back from war uh, and are, you know, really struggling with PTSD. EFT clears all that energy and uh, so it's a really beautiful technique to use yeah it's one of my favorites it's, it's one of the things I think it was one of the first certifications I got was to become an EFT practitioner and it really did help release a lot of things mm -hmm. from my life yeah. <clears throat> it does I've been using it a lot actually lately and um, one of the things I love it for is you know, not only uh, clearing what's happening currently, but it allows you with simple tapping to um, uh, discover what else is going on for you. And that's one of the things I really love is sometimes we don't know, you know, we don't know how we're feeling. We don't know what's going on. And especially if we've been on that diet roller coaster and we've been, um, you know, feeling that we're <clears throat> we're just going around in circles and going nowhere, but we don't know how to get off that roller coaster. We don't know how to create a peaceful relationship with food. Tapping allows us to, to bring up all of the things in a very loving, gentle, respectful way. The, the kinds of things that are blocking us, that are keeping us trapped and stuck. So uh, that's the other reason I like it. It is. I never thought of it being gentle, but it does bring up a lot of things. Um, I noticed just in my own practice, I'm like, oh, I thought I was feeling this way. And then it wasn't even <laughs> close to what it really was. <laughs> um, like surface level was not what was going on. That's for sure. Yeah. 
Well, and, you know, we're often really sort of cut off at the neck, right? We, we're so focused on our, on our thinking and what's going on up in our head, and we don't connect with our bodies. And that's really where the emotional stuff happens. That's where the, the, the meat of all of this uh, uh, goes on, you know, in, in a sense, right? You, your, your emotions get trapped in your body. And uh, unless you clear both the emotional and sort of the physiological uh, stress and, and stuff that's going on within you, you can think all the affirmations you want, but they're, they're not going to be as effective as when you, you work with both. So that's the other thing about EFT is you work with, you know, you're, you're looking at sort of clearing energy within the body and but you're also looking at sort of the psychological aspect of what's happening. So yeah, it's a, it's a phenomenal tool. So I want to know how did EFT come into your life? Like what's the story there? So I, well, so I started so, okay, I don't know how far to go back. <laughs> go back as far as you want. <laughs> well, you know, I, I started coaching. I'm a registered social worker as well. So I was, you know, coaching and, and counseling. Um, I've been doing that for donkey's years. I'm not going to tell you how many years because then you know how old I am. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, in my practice, I was trained in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, and used NLP a lot with my clients, um, particularly when there was traumatic events and traumas from childhood and stuff like that. Um, when I decided, sort of looking at retirement, I decided that I would formalize uh, my coaching, the coaching part of my practice. So I went to Ericsson International and they, they embed NLP in their, in their process, which was what I really wanted. And so I did their training and um, throughout sort of all of that, then, um, you know, I was heading into retirement and thought I'm going to become a coach, <clears throat> leave sort of the heavy duty counseling behind and, and really start coaching. And so created a practice um, as a coach, my, created my business, Wiser Woman Coaching and Personal Development. And, um, and as I um, went through, sort of, you know, developed my business. Uh, a tragedy happened in our family. My brother was killed, murdered. Um, and there were two things that I realized. One was life is short and can change on a dime. And the second one was that I had been a chronic dieter for decades. And I decided that I no longer wanted to count points. And I wanted to create a different kind of relationship with food and my body. And so I started down the path of working with disordered eating and with women particularly who struggle with disordered eating, emotional eating, binge eating, overeating, all that stuff. And um, I was, you know, NLP is a fabulous tool. And then I was sort of looking around and thinking, well, what else could I add? Because I, I really wanted to be able to, to be effective and get underneath the issues that food creates for us or that are there and then we turn to food and so I was on holiday in England and I had about 10 days that I didn't have anything to do and so I looked around and found some training um so I, I wanted to do actually I wanted to do a, a writing class but they didn't have anything available at the time it was in October I came across a woman who uh, teaches EFT and so I thought that's it. I'm going to sign up. And I started her program um, and was certified in level two EFT. And we'll, you know, hopefully in the next year, be doing level three with her. Um, and, uh, and so I've been able to combine EFT and NLP and do some amazing clearing and work with women around childhood issues that uh, have created, you know, this turning to food. Um, disliking their body, all of those kinds of things. So it's fabulous. I love it. That's how I got started. <laughs> That's amazing. And I love that you looked for something else and it was just presented. I feel like those are the most magical things that end up in our life are those ones that are like, I want something else, but it just shows up. 
Yeah, exactly. I, you know, I have a, a really nice balance in, in my toolbox. I've got, um, in, when I first started uh, as a social worker, I worked with a, uh, an organiza organization that worked with women who were sort of pre-employment. Um, they were on social assistance and uh, were in, you know, trying to figure out their lives and lots of stuff going on for them. And um, Christine, who was the executive director, insisted that we're, we were, all the staff were trained in one modality. And so I came out of social work school really not knowing a whole lot because um, you know, I hadn't really done a lot of work with people and went into contemporary women's program and she insisted that we were all trained in choice theory reality therapy reality therapy choice theory um, which is a very cognitive model but it's such a great grounding because and solid base to work from because you can add in anything to it um, and so it's very cognitive around um, looking at uh, you know your feelings and your thoughts and and your actions and your physiology and how those all fit together and where you have control in your life which is in your you know your thinking and and your actions but your feelings and your physiology those are so important because they are your signals to tell you whether you're okay or not and so that was my start and then I added in NLP and um, and you know now EFT in the last uh, couple of years and so I've just built on the experiences that I've had and the training that I've had over over years so I have quite a good toolbox to work from and how has that toolbox helped you in your life oh immensely you know um we always go into something like social work or counseling or coaching to help others uh, and the, part of the reason we go in, into helping others is because we've had issues uh, ourselves. And so for me, the, the biggest issue throughout my life was weight and using food to soothe my, my soul, <laughs> to soothe my emotional uh, self and not being able to, you know, not having the confidence over many years, particularly when I was uh, a younger person. To, uh, to step into my power. And so my tools over years have helped me peel that onion away and look at all of the different pieces of my life and parts of my life and figure out how I can be more confident, how I can step into my power as a, as a woman. Um, and doing this work, you know, when you, when you do the work of a coach or a, a, as a counselor, you have to do your own work. Because, you know, you, you can't be behind your client. You have to be in front of your client. And so in order to do the coaching, you have to be able to, to have experienced your own growth and development or else you're not effective. And so, so that's how it's helped me. I've been able to do a lot of my own work and I've, I've worked with other coaches uh, on a personal level and with other counselors. And I'm absolutely, Absolutely, an advocate of you know if there's something going on for you and you can't figure it out on your own work with somebody else because they've got the experience and it's sometimes hard to get out of your own way to see where your blocks are where your challenges are and where you need that shifting and that adjusting so i i totally believe in that and um, have a lot of respect for people who have the courage because it takes a lot of courage to call a counselor or a coach and say you know I really need help I really need to work this through and it means work it's it's not just going and chatting um you know and saying oh I've got this issue and and that's all very fine and good no you have to really dig in and you have to do the work and um so it, it takes a lot of energy and and commitment to do that yeah so if someone was just like getting started and realizing like, okay, things need to change in my life. I'm willing to put the work in. I'm ready to, I'm ready to do all the things. What, like in your point, in your journey, what was that turning point that was like, okay, I can, I am courageous enough to get help. Like, is there normally a turning it, point? Yeah. There's been a few turning points. Um, I think that you know, your friends are lovely 
and you can talk to your friends and sometimes that's really helpful. But I think there comes a point, um, and certainly there was for me over a number of years um, when things were happening in my family that I, I, I couldn't sort it out on my own and felt that, you know, if I didn't get the support that I needed, um, I just keep going around in circles. And that became so uncomfortable. Um, and so that there was that, that point that I reached out and got some counseling support. Um, when my brother was murdered, it was pretty clear to me that I had no idea how to sort that out. I, you know, um, I, it took about a month uh, for me to reach out to a counselor because I thought, oh, well, this is a tragedy and I can sort of, you know, sit with this for a bit. And it was good that I sat with it. Uh, but then after a while, it's like, you know, no, I can't, uh, I don't know how to sort this out. I've not experienced something as traumatic as this in my life. Had lots of trauma, big T trauma, small T trauma, but this is the biggest and I needed that help to, to, to move forward. Um, and so I, again, it's that you, you get, to the, I got to the point where I was so uncomfortable sitting with what I was sitting with and didn't know what to do with it. And so that's when I would often reach out, and, you know, in my life. Yeah. That's, that's a great point. It's just like, there's a certain point when you can't handle the, un the uncomfortable anymore. And you know, there's, you know, there's a light, but you don't know what the light is. Exactly. And it's, again, it's hard to sort that out with, within yourself. Um, when you're in it, you know, and so it's really helpful to have a coach or a counselor ask you the questions that you need to be asked so that you can sort it out, help you get out of your own way, help you um, uh, transform those limiting beliefs, those thoughts and beliefs that, that keep you stuck, that keep you going around in circles, that offer you the opportunity to look at things in a different way. And, you know, food is a perfect example. Um, I knew that I wanted to do things differently with food, but I didn't know how to do it. And so, um, you know, I started out with looking at intuitive eating and reading the book and listening to podcasts. And that was a great start. Um, and I was able to take myself farther and farther. And then I was, of course, connected with a coach who, uh, who works in this field and was also then able to um, I was able to watch her, I was able to listen to her, I was able to question, you know, ask questions, and, uh, and, and then continue that work that I needed in order to create that peaceful relationship with food and my body that I have now. Not perfect, for sure, but certainly way farther along than I ever thought that I would ever be. But it, the impetus for all of that was again, that tragedy around my brother and knowing that, you know, I, I didn't want to stay stuck in um, a pattern <clears throat> and a system that had kept me feeling awful about myself, had kept me feeling like I was never successful. And when I was successful in twice in my life of getting down to a goal weight, I couldn't stay there. Well, I couldn't stay there because I hadn't done the emotional work. And you know, all of the things that I believed, I believed I was addicted to sugar, I believed that carbs were bad, I believed that food would, I would never be a healthy person with around food, that I would always be emotional, an, an emotional eater, that <clears throat> I couldn't love my body unless it was, unless she was, you know, 110 pounds or whatever, right? And I just got to the point where I was so uncomfortable with that and knew that it wasn't working. And probably the regret I have is not, not recognizing that way sooner in my life because it took me until I was in my 50s to recognize that. But here we are, you know, at some point, I think that you get to a point where you just realize that, or I did anyway, that I just didn't want to do what I'd always done. I felt like I was banging my head on the wall every single time I started that new diet on Monday. Right? Yeah. 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 I think so many of so many of us are familiar with that. We're familiar with 
that emotional cycle that we go through or that binge eating cycle that we go through that we start our diet on Monday. And for me, it got to the point where, you know, I would get my pen and paper out and I would write down my breakfast in the morning. For, you know, first of all, I would wake up <laughs> and I would think, all right, Monday, start of a new day, start of a new week. I'm going to get this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be really good all week. And so I would set that intention. And then I would, you know, go down, write my, all my meals out for the day. <clears throat> and by four o'clock, I'd already blown through my points and had no points left and then thought, well, screw it. I'm just going to eat. And so I couldn't do it anymore. I just literally could not bring myself to count another point. So I think a lot of us go through this recognizing that things aren't working, but there's a lot of fear in letting go of that system and letting go of that cycle, because what else is there? You know, what else do you go to then if you're not counting points so you're not dieting or you're not follow, follow, following someone else's meal plan or you're not um, you know counting calories on your on your iPhone or or your what's it called the um, the apps with uh, there's one that I used to use anyway you know so then what else do you do and it takes a lot of courage to be able to say I'm done I'm done with diet culture. I'm done with this whole emotional eating stuff. I'm done with all of that. I just want to create a peaceful relationship with food in my body. So I think it's a hard place to shift from, but the clients that I work with um, are women who are, who are exhausted <clears throat> like I was from going around in circles and not being able to figure out what to do differently, but knowing that, that cycle wasn't what they wanted anymore. They wanted something more for themselves. So that's, that's where I'm, that's where I'm at now. I'm, I, you know, I, I love the work that I do and, and um, it's really gratifying. And I absolutely was thrilled to get to a place myself where um, I, I don't have any issues with food. For the most part, there are days. There are there's the odd day that I that I think about. Well, should I have that piece of pie? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have that piece of pie. Um, but you know, I check in with my body, check in with myself to see whether it's something that I really want. And if I if I want it, I have it. And there's no guilt. There's no shame. There's no um, going around that cycle anymore. It's fabulous. I love that. And the thing that I think stands out the most is checking in with your body. We've forgotten <clears throat> to check in with ourselves. You know, um, I know being, you know, in the intuitive eating space myself um, mm -hmm. for the last year, that was the one thing that I realized was my big realization. This is like I kept seeking outside sources to tell me what my body needed. And yeah. it was like, it's not going to work. That's what outside selling, not inside. But that going inside was hard. Yes. Yes. Because we're not used to it. We don't know what our, our hunger signals are. Um, we don't know <clears throat> when, what, what satiety feels like. <clears throat> Excuse me. We don't know what um, our signals our body gives us when we're not listening and we're not paying attention. And we're not used to checking in with our bodies. But our bodies know, our bodies are smart. And if we listen to our bodies, they will tell us exactly what it is we need to eat, how much we need to eat, when we need to eat. And, you know, it's our brain that overrides any of that. And, um, and you know, body wisdom really is, is one of the big keys to overcoming and transforming things like emotional eating and binge eating. It truly is. So speaking of like your, your practice and stuff, where can people find you? Oh, so they can find me on my pretty new website, actually, which is I'm really excited about. And there's also a, <clears throat> a free emotional eating, um, a wiser woman's guide to transforming emotional eating um, free ebook that they can access as well on my website. Um, so I can be found at www.joanwoodsdell.com. So that's one of the places. I'm also on Facebook 
and a um, little bit on LinkedIn. And I've started to become more visible on Instagram as well. So my Instagram tag or whatever it's called is at joan.ridsdale. So I can be found anywhere. And I'll, I'll make sure that... I'll make sure to get all the information in the um, show notes so it's easy for people to find. Because I think that what you're doing and your part, like I, like when we were talking, this this podcast is made to be like a tsunami of self love. What I'm also realizing is that we're all change makers that I've been interviewing, and you're making a change in that diet culture so that we can go inward, and it's okay to be us through food and confidence. It's okay to be confident. It's okay to have your own thing. And I just, I love what you're doing. It's, it's amazing that this, that's what everything has morphed into. And you have that background of the social work too, um, which I think is great because you can do a bigger range of things with people and allow them to go through that space. And I think, I just think it's magical. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, my goal, you know, is to work with women so that they can really step into their power food and the, you know, disordered eating takes away our power. And when you can step into your own power, get out of your own way, um, magical things happen. You know, you feel more confident, you're resilient, you're intuitive about your body. <clears throat> and there's nothing better than really to come home to your own body. And it's the only vehicle that you have to live in for the rest of your life. And so you know, it's important to make the most of that. And I think, um, you know, the more that women can recognize their signals and recognize their truth and be able to speak their truth, then, um, you know, that's, that's, the, that's what keeps me going in, in this work and, and keeps me motivated to keep working with women around this issue. And it is a big issue. And then I've seen it a lot in all of my spaces, like, okay, it's, it's time, it's time to make a change here. Yeah, yeah, it definitely, it is a huge issue. And that's why, <clears throat> you know, it's not a quick fix. Um, it's, it's a work, it's work that needs to be, you know, we need to dig into it and, and, um, and women need to be willing to, to, to go the distance. And so, but I tell you, I, would not have done it any differently. And once I once I recognized that I didn't want to stay you know, mired in that mess, <clears throat> um, uh, I I got to tell you, it's just the the best thing to have a peaceful relationship with food in your body, and not be worried about what you eat and all of those kinds of things. I bet it gives you back a ton of time. <laughs> Oh my gosh, <clears throat> the mental capacity that I have now compared to what I used to when I used to get up and think about dieting. I mean, yeah, there's so much more to life. And, and that's really, you know, about the work that I do is, is helping women step into their lives and, and their power, but step into their lives in a fully and completely uh, different way that allows for so much room, you know, for friends and family and so much more in their lives. Yeah. I love that. So if someone was to walk away with just one, one little nugget, <clears throat> what would you want them to, to, to walk away with? Hmm. I think one of the biggest things that, uh, for me, that made a huge difference was to give myself permission, full permission to learn to do things differently full permission to eat and eat freely. And that doesn't mean you have to go crazy with food, but it just means that you give yourself permission to eat whatever it is that you and your body need and want and learn to, learn to think of food differently, to feel into food differently. Um, which then means that you're feeling into yourself differently and in such a, in such a better way um, so that you're not, again, mired in all that stress and that anxiety. And so I would say just give yourself permission to explore a different way. And that goes, that, for me, that was a big one. Just giving myself permission. So that's what I would say.